Hey guys, I would like to go back in time with you to year 2001 and show you the project I worked on back then. It is Games Development Framework and um, it's actually open source since 2005. And now I'm going to show you how easy it is to create a very simple application which will show an image in the window, you know, with, with, this, with this framework. How do you do that? How easy it is. This is C++ 98. I'm going to use some features of newer C++ now because this is Visual Studio 2022. But, um, you know, the library itself is C++ 98. So I'm going to include a few things. Use less. Use less if that's necessary include to start with. There is an application system. Application. Okay, we will need another one. We have graphics and device screen. We have create screen. We want this one. Okay, and we can start with that. Now, this application will have to have main function. It's a capital M main because this is a special function for, uh, that is, you know, hooked into this library. So this library uh, takes over the win main actually. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say create smart pointer of useless screen. Okay. And we're just going to say uh, create screen. We need uh, useless. And give it a title. So that's our our screen, right? So that's that's not enough. If we want this to show some window on the screen, we need to say screen open window it. And that's it's gonna be 640 by 480. Why not? And that's gonna be a window. And the next thing we need to do is use this application run, you know, use this application run. So that will run the, the loop, the message loop. Now, let's see what will happen if we do that. You can see this is our window with the title example app. Okay. Now, the next thing we want to do, we want to load an image and put that image into that screen. So, we're going to go ahead and in graphic, there is a um, thing called planes and its image. Okay. And now, what type of image we're going to load? We're going to load this TGA here. So, this is our image we're going to load. It's a nice screenshot from DCS, of course. Um, so we're gonna include um, a loader for this, okay? It's a file I/O, and we have a TGA loader for this, okay? And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create here an instance of class image. And I'm going to say it's going to be BG TGA, so background, right? So you can see in Solution Explorer we have this BG TGA, and in the properties of this file, I made it copy files so that will go into output directory. Now, this will not show any image yet because we just created an object with a file name, right? We could even do that if we have doubts. We can do that before we create screen, right? And that's all fine because this this image has nothing to do with the screen, right? This image is just, you know, an image. And what we can do here in order to make this image appear on the screen, we have a bleed to 
screen this auto completion is not helping us um yeah because we need to put x and y and now it's all great okay now let's see what will happen the image will not appear on the screen yet you know there's one more one more thing we need to do you can see that uh, this the screen is showing the window is showing but uh, the image is not showing right so what's going on we need to do screen and it's called swap we need to call swap on the screen and that will you know swap the buffers so we have double buffered screen right and in order to show something we need to swap buffers now we have this kind of weird situation that i'm resizing the window and you see oh the image even stopped drawing so something is not right you know something is not right so i'm going like this and it doesn't fill the window and you know it's 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 not amazing right so how can we improve this situation how can we um you know make this whole thing be more uh, alive so i'm gonna create a class i'm gonna call it simple app okay and what i'm gonna do i'm gonna put this smart pointer for screen in here as a private member i'm gonna make it m screen instead so i'm gonna use convention i think from boost and i'm gonna put here public constructor okay and in this constructor i'm just gonna say m screen equals and i'm gonna do this create screen okay i'm just gonna take this and put it here okay this is what i did i just removed it from the main and put it inside in here another thing i want is this image so i'm gonna take this image and make it a variable here so you can see how i'm converting a local scope of this function main into a class so this this class will be you know equivalent to this local scope but i want to make it so that i can then have more methods you know so what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna say the image is initialized with this bg okay so that's how we will initialize the image and then we have left this bit here so we need to open screen image blade screen swap so let's let's make a method here void let's call it run oh, and press too many enters and i'm going to just put all this in the run why not to do that right and now here well i'm just gonna change this to m m m right so i didn't actually do much i just put those things into a class and um, i'm now creating an app and i can say app run that's what i'm gonna do and if i run this app it should do the same thing as it used to let's see if that works you can see it does work and it behaves exactly the same way so what we can do next is we can remove this bleed to and swap into a separate function okay because it's clear to us that we will have to redraw the whole thing we'll have to make sure that after we resize window we we redraw the image so we have a function here for that we have this tie to signal this is a magical function which attaches to signal which screen has on resize okay and we're gonna say this and we're gonna say at simple app we need to remember this is c plus plus 98 so there was no lambdas in c plus plus 98 and i do not support lambdas uh, in this code because i haven't updated it to c plus plus 11 so you know it's it's not gonna work now let's see what will happen now you can see there is no image and now image showed up because i'm resizing so we need to add here 
draw and now the image will appear on the first uh, iteration okay so we have a image that shows now i would like this image to change its size to fill to fill the window i want it to fill the window so here in this draw i'm gonna do something like this image set dust width and i'm gonna do m screen get width you know i'm oh, sorry um image is an instance it's not a pointer um, image set height and screen get height okay so as you see it's not that complicated actually the image will go still to point coordinate zero zero right because the left corner upper corner is in the right place and here we go it has scaled look at this it is stretching Right? If you want to maintain aspect rat, you need to do some calculations. Okay, you need to do some calculations of, you know, what you want um, it to be like. But we will skip that for now. We can we can bleed the same image again if we want to. For example, I can just bleed it into some position like screen width multiplied by uh, say divided by half. Right. So I can do this. And what that will do, it will be the same image halfway. So you can see it's two twice on the screen. If, if I want the second image to have a different size, um, for that we will have to call this set this, uh, this width and this height to be say, let's say one quarter. And um, here we go, we have the image in the image and and this is how it how it shows right um but it's it sounds like uh, you know this is kind of you know the same image we're changing its size twice what we can actually also do is we can um, make a copy of the image okay And when we do that, we can also we can also say here the uh, we can also specify the color key. We can specify the rectangle, so we can. This is a clip rectangle, so I can cut a fragment of the image, right? Make a sub image uh, with the color key as well, right? But I want to do it this way, and then this image I want to say it's it's like this, and the second image. Let's say the second image, image two. Right, so that's image one. That's image two. I can make another copy here, and I want to make it this size. You may think, why don't we just? pass here to this bleed the dimensions in which I want this image to be. Well, that's, that has a reason, okay? There is a reason behind that. Um, the reason is that you actually, when you, when you develop a product, you, you don't want to think about resizing your images. You want to have them to have specific size. Um, it's very unlikely that when you develop game, you'll be resizing your window. Right? It's usually full screen, but it's very likely that images uh, will have some fixed uh, dimensions stored in them, that the image itself has some stored di uh, fixed dimensions. And by default, these dimensions are whatever the image has in the, the, the fa header. So this TGA has some dimensions by default, which is the pixels. But we, we are kind of like saying, yeah, but we will scale it to these dimensions when we bleed. So that's, that's what we're doing. Now, we're going to have these two images now here, but we're bleeding the wrong image. So we can see here that we want to do image one bleed, and we want to do image two bleed. Okay? And guess what? It works. Right? Now, what happened here is that 
you know, we didn't actually copy the image here. So both images, image one and image two, they just reference the image, M image, okay? And, uh, you know, they share the same, uh, same textures on which this is drawn. So there's a few aspects here worth mentioning, right? So when we create this application, I create this M image from file, and this M image has no idea what the screen will be. And this create screen is a factory method which can create uh, OpenGL screen, it can create a Windows GDI screen. If you have direct access DK version uh, 8 uh, or 9, um, it will create a direct X screen as well. Uh, and, and whatever other you know API implemented is there, you can also create a different uh, underlying API version of the screen. So, so we creating some screen, and it has this this API has some mechanics of creating textures. Obviously, DirectX has different way of creating textures and different formats, pixel formats, than OpenGL and so on. So, you know, this image was created before we had even capability of creating any textures. We didn't we don't know anything about any textures at this stage. Notice that this code has not doesn't say anything about any textures. It doesn't mention any textures, right? Also, this image doesn't have any specific dimensions that would have to fit in the texture. So, so some time ago, now textures may have uh, random dimensions, but some time ago, um, in 2001, it had to be power of two. And that's also not the case in the case of this image, because this image has some dimensions that are definitely not power of two. It looks square-ish, but it's not. I don't know why it doesn't say the resolution. Maybe if I move my mouse to the corner, you can see 882 by 724, I think, was the resolution. So there's definitely not power of 2. And back then, uh, when graphics card uh, required textures to be power of 2, you needed to do some tricks. And this screen here, that's for OpenGL, is using lists. It's using draw lists. So, you know, this is hidden from you. You don't see that. This is a very complicated mechanism to actually take this file. Just imagine how complex this is underneath, under the hood. Under the hood, you have like this very complicated machinery which will load this file. Now, loading the file, it doesn't have to be the, from the hard drive. This library supports the virtual file system. So it will load the file, this is the file name, and it will find this file name somewhere in virtual file system. It will load the bytes of this file into specific uh, class that will uh, detect the file type. Then based on the file type, uh, not an extension, extension is actually used as accelerator, but uh, in general, it, it scans the headers of the, of the file. So if this had extension XYZ, it would still be no, it's TGA and it would choose a loader for this file. It would use that loader to load it onto a texture, right? So we have this TGA loader include. By including TGA loader, so that line include, it not only allows you to use the header, but it also registers, there is a magic inside us, that when you use the include of this header, this header will automatically add an object into a factory. Okay, so that's some magic uh, with static variables uh, that allows me to do that. So when you include TGA loader, that suddenly adds support for TGA files. And when I'm doing M image BG TGA, then this TGA loader will be selected to load that. Now we have a TGA loader which can load a file in format TGA, but we don't know anything about texture. So this image may have a loader, but it cannot load pixels yet because where, where would it load them? There is no textures. We create screen here. Screen is created later and uh, the screen happens to be, say, OpenGL in this case, right? So, but when we create a screen, there's nothing to do with this image. So, you know, screen lives its own life. The image lives its own life. What happens next is we run the application. So if we scroll back to our main, we have this application, we created it, that's our construction, and here we run it. And when we run application, what we do, we open the screen. So this method here tells this screen that now it will be uh, opened as windows. So um, create screen just creates an object of screen. It creates an object 
capable of creating a window or full screen mode. And then this object, we need to request it to open some mode and it, it opens windowed mode. And next thing we do, we, we attach to the signal resize our function. Okay, we say uh, on this screen, when it resizes, when there is a signal resize, that's, an, uh, that's another, you can see this is, um, this is a signal, signal two, meaning that it has two parameters. Uh, so this is a signal of a screen. Uh, back then, and even now, QT would be an example of signals and slots, where classes would have defined slots and signals, and you would connect them. Here, you don't use the word connect, the wording is, is tie, T-I-E. So like tie laces, tie shoelaces. So, you know, back then my, my creativity was, let's say, you know, I'm from Poland and I imagine that I'm tying two objects together. I'm using some sort of shoelace to, to attach to the screen this method, right? So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm attaching this draw function, which is here, into this resize, uh, which, is, which, is, which is a signal. A signal is actually a list of functors. So when the signal is raised, so screen will raise on resize uh, signal when you resize the screen. You can imagine that there is a mechanism behind that. And when it raises the signal, all functors in the list will be invoked. And by doing tie to signal, you are putting this method to get. So this is un unbound method draw, and this is the this. So these two together get bound together into bound method inside of this list, right? So you get a binding between these two. And this method is no parameters method, so it, we don't need to uh, bind parameters. If I, if I, um, so, so the resize has two parameters, two integers, and I can do here like this, int width, int height, I could do that. And then you can see this is still gonna work because uh, this resize will pass those parameters to this method. But it's it's kind of for forgiving because without parameters, if my, if my method has no parameters, then this will also work because my method doesn't, it's, it's it, my method is covariant, right? In, in such a way uh, that if, if my signal can provide more parameters than I need, I can ignore them, right? It's kind of JavaScript-ish way, right? Um, so, so that's how we connect this method to the screen resize, but we still didn't paint the image. And now we do draw. So before even we resize screen, this may happen in some future when we drag a corner, we still need to draw bef because this is our first presentation of a window. So we call draw. And in this presentation of a window, we do following. We create a copy of this image. So we create an image with file name, we have a loader, but now we're creating a copy of this image. What happens when you copy an image, you're actually copying only references. There is no copying happening there. Uh, all you do is you just increment some reference counts on some objects and, you know, it, it, it under the bonnet, behind the scenes, everything just happens and you don't need to worry at all. You just do operation like this. I'm creating an object of type image from another object of type image and I see it as a copy but under the bonnet there is very efficient no copy you know it's a zero copy mechanism right and I'm telling that this this instance of this it, let's call it inst image instance this image instance will have those dimensions and this other image instance will have those dimensions so we just setting some properties of those two image objects how to how they should present themselves when they are drawn on the screen right now there is nothing to do with the screen yet. So these images don't know yet anything about any textures. Uh, we're still only doing like a virtual uh, properties, right? They, they're not attached to any actual device. And here what happens in Bleed 2, this is the first place, first moment when image touches the screen. So image that doesn't have any texture touches the screen that has actual connection with device and the driver and, you know, the library, which is OpenGL. Um, and then magic happens under the bonnet, which allocates a texture. In this case, it actually allocates a set of textures. It splits the image into a number of smaller chunks that are power of two. Image gets tessellated into squares. 
and then those squares get put into a list and then I just draw this list right and the same happens here so the allocation of the OpenGL resources happens in bleed 2 right when you bleed it to the screen so the image uh, doesn't know anything about it and then this bleed 2 will magically create all that and when when we resize the window when we resize the window this draw will be called again and when it's drawn called again at this stage image already has those textures and this bleed tool will reuse them it will not uh, reallocate anything those lists will be you know nothing will be changed right everything will be uh, remain unchanged we will not be uh, reallocating any textures so so that's how kind of smart uh, clever maybe i should say this this mechanism is i will show you the mechanism in a moment and then we swap we do screen swap and when we screen swap we present the new content so you, you have to imagine that every time it's a bleed it's on the back buffer and now we swap front and back and now the back is in front and we're presenting it so i can show you that it works here we go it works right okay so let's add one more thing here i'm gonna add sound let me show you how easy it is to have some sound in this framework and i want to remind you that this framework is that was developed in the year 2001-2006 so there is a folder sound as you can see there is a nice folder structure right so you have application is in the system everything that relates to graphics is in graphic the screen is in device image is in the planes uh, loader is in a file io so you can imagine that similar structure will be for the sound there is device there is direct sound and direct sound card And we also need something similar to that image but it's gonna be sound so we have sound and we have for example sample okay and now we need something similar to TGA loader so we're gonna be loading this wave file use less sound and guess what file IO and it is wave loader right so so this way we'll be able to create a sound card create an object of type sample and make it use waves so let's put it here i just want sample and sample so that's going to be our sound okay So let's load it and in the same way we're going to use sound card and I need to say M screen and there is also option to use 3D processing which allows you to use um, you know to do some 3D audio all right so so we have a we have a sample loaded let's see if that all works if it crashes maybe it didn't crash it's all good so let's let's play the sound but let's do it here play sound and i'm gonna play sound um m sound card play um, sample oh, that's what we're gonna do so the parameters for that we don't want to loop we don't want to pause the sound we just want to play it and then now we need to have some sort of signal that will um, allow us to, to play it this auto completion is not really amazing 
say about I'm gonna click on the screen on click on button or something on mouse btn is this what I need on mouse btn yes click okay it's actually um, it's not actually click because it's actually mouse button and we need to handle it so this btn is I feel like I should put here button now I'm gonna put here mouse button and button and change so this um, this signal is raising is, is it has two arguments right so if you go to definition it has status bits and changed bits mask right so so this is what the signal is by the way if you wonder how those signals are defined they're just defined like this so they're just member variables of a class so this is some class it's called in this case it's called window and uh, yeah, they're just, just members, public members, that's it. And uh, you just access them like that, say tie to signal, and that's, that's what happens. So I'm going to say something like this. If button uh, is one, so because it's a mask, so I'm going to do end one. And that's the, that means that the first button. And then the second thing is, we want to do it when when um, when it changed, right? So so yeah. So this one will say which button has changed. We say the mask is saying the first mouse button has changed, and then this is the state. So the change could be up or down. So this way we're st we're testing if first button is changed from from down to up. So we clicked the, we pressed the button and. Now we can say play, right? So that will cause uh, the sound to play when I click. As we can hear, right? So we have a window that we can resize and that we can click on. And there's a sound playing. Isn't that amazing? Okay, so time to have a look at the details of the implementation and uh, I don't want to go too deeply into this uh, I didn't even show you how we can use you know UI toolkit which is here as well which is as simple as everything else so you can imagine that if putting image on the screen was this simple then building UI is also this simple so Probably you just create some UI, you create some button, you put it into UI and so on, and you just you just run application at the end. Um, so, so yeah, what we would like to see is perhaps um, may, maybe the best thing to do is if I just um, put a breakpoint here and show you on the debugger, but easier to, to see maybe. So first thing happens is image constructor. Let's see at image constructor. So we have a file name, which is background TGA. We can keep going and I don't know why is it jumping like this. Now we have this first line here. We have IFS instance open file. So there is a singleton, this instance, this is a singleton of input file system. Input file system means a file system providing files that I can read from those files and I want to open a file with this file name right so I would like to open a file and we're not going to go into detail how this works because it supports a virtual file system and it does lots of things but I'm just going to skip over it and I can show you that file is now an object okay it's some object and it's an object of type std std i file so 
this is my class okay which wraps the standard io another thing that happens here is this image factory right so the image factory will create a loader now i'm not going to go in detail how this image factory does it it has a map there it scans to find um you know the appropriate loader and as we see it also provides the dimensions and format of the of the image so it it uses the thing called um let, let me just go in maybe just to show you one step more um yeah i don't know this uh okay so that's gonna be interesting so you can see here we've got um some utility class mem block so this just allocates some amount of memory um then we read this file up to, to up to size of this block it's kind of hard code it just should be something like mem.size or something like this um yeah i was then very young and i wasn't very experienced developer so you're looking at the code of a very inexperienced c++ engineer um so so yeah so we we have read this into this memory and now for every entry in our entries and we have only one entry at this stage which is tga loader tga loader right and what we can do next is we can continue see what happens there's some id last entry okay there's some iteration happening and if there is a recognizer recognizer is I guess a function that takes some parameters and we have the recognizer and now this recognizer let's see what this recognizer is like it's a tga loader recognizer right recognize it's a function method of tg loader which will take this file and it will output into those variables here uh, you know, if it detects that it is correct a TGA image, it, if it has a TGA file header, it will produce the dimensions and the format of, of the image so that then, um, you know, this will be then used to allocate some texture. So this is information needed later on. B before we can actually load this image into texture, we need to allocate it first. So this, this allows us to know um, what we will need to allocate before we, we read the image so there is some test and eventually we, we populate those so we continue and we have boolean here saying that we were happy because it was tga file and the next thing we do we stick to the beginning of the file because we need to load this file from the beginning that was just recognition so this the way it works is open the file with tga uh, a file this tga in this case but it opens the file um, it reads some number of bytes it tries to recognize using uh, going the loop here over entries so in this case there was one entry there could have been more entries it could be like for example bmp loader um, png loader and it would just check with every of these loaders and if one of them recognizes the image then this this will be used right um if it's not recognized, I always throw errors. So this error here is also from this library. And um, yeah, so so we do have this success here. And um, I guess this will create an instance of the TG loader. And voila we have a tg loader in our loader variable here this is a smart pointer as we can see object encounter so we have a file we have a loader and now this loader um, this loader will have this file in it already referenced and then um, we say that the rectangle for the image so that's our clip region, the original clip region. So we didn't specify, uh, we didn't specify any specific area of the image. We just said this is the file name. So we say we'll be drawing the whole image, and then the, the designated width and height. So original width and height of the image, right? 
So this is this is the things that we set in our main to change the height and, and, and width when we say we wanna wanna draw different dimensions. We wanna use these different dimensions in here. Whereas uh, in the construction we just use the image settings. So that's how we constructed image and you can see the this sound uh, loading is gonna be the same thing as the sample loader. So you can see um, you know, sample file is gonna go ahead and open a file with IFS. There'll be some properties for the sound, like different properties. There'll be sound factory creating some loader and, um, you know, some properties as well. And that's it. And we have a loader, right? Okay. So the next thing is to open the screen, uh, initialize the sound card. So there's just constructors. Next thing that will happen is run. Let's go ahead. Um, the next thing we just open a window, and that's not really interesting. It's probably you know done some Windows API calls to do that. Then we connect uh, those two signals. We don't want to go into detail of with those, and we just go to the draw function. Now let me just show you what this. Um, you know what this constructor here will do uh, so what happens is it's interesting that it jumps straight into this share be shared we just reassign the shared and add reference um, okay um, yeah Okay, we, we have a rectangle, a smart pointer object. Lots of things happened. We actually don't know what happened. That's interesting. So, um, so we took this, but we, we, we did something there that we didn't see really. Um, okay, so let's see what does the set does with do. That's a you know arrow operator and get with for the screen. And then we have set with and you see we set the width and height with this, right? So that's a properties of, of image base, which is partially abstract class. Okay. So now we're going to do bleed two, and this is the most interesting method of all. And I would like to have a closer look, right, with you. So we just go outside of this. Okay, so we have bleed two. And here we have number of calls that are interesting. So first, we take the output surface. So output is all graphics. Now you've seen I passed here screen as output, but uh, it has to be all graphics. So all graphics is an abstract class. It allows uh, this i graphics to bleed itself to all graphics. So we're calling we're calling images method bleed to screen. So image bleed to screen, but it is actually method implemented in abstract class iGraphics and it takes abstract class OGraphics as, as a target. So you have two abstract classes and you may wonder how they know how to cooperate. How do they know how, how image should collaborate with screen? This is iGraphics. It doesn't know that it is an image. This is OGraphics, nothing to do with screen yet. So how do they know? And there is this call to cooperate. This is the magic call which explains everything. So what happens in Cooperate, um, it's image-based implementation which will um, get the properties of a surface, right? So we, we remember, maybe we go back to calls on call stack. What we did, we, we did the destination. So from the screen, okay? It really doesn't matter if it's a screen or not. Important is that OGraphics has a function get surface. 
and this surface is a is a representation of uh, something kind of hardware-ish. This thing itself is not hardware surface yet. It is it is a shared resource that that these objects you know may, may share like different O graphics objects may share the surface, different I graphics may share the surface, and then they share the actual um, implementation of a surface, right? So the cooperate will take this properties of the surface, right? So, so the, the cooperate will take properties of a surface that's currently associated with the image, um, if there is any, but there is no, so we skip this one, there is no properties, you can see it's nothing there. And we have this surface from the screen here, so we have our current surface from the image and surface from the screen, right? And we need to figure out what we're going to do here in this cooperate, and there's going to be a number of things happening. So, if shared surface, if our surface, if, the, if, if it's not null, but if it is, it is null, right? We skip it. It's no surface is true, okay? And we break, okay? So we, we don't like this condition. Now, if there is no surface, or if it's not valid, or width is wrong or height is wrong. So basically we have used this loop here um, to detect if we need to reallocate probably the surface. Um, then we need to create a new surface with properties, right? And those properties, they came from, you know, from the image loader, right? Remember when we did the recognize, the image loader recognize uh, was uh, telling us what the width, what the height, and what is the uh, bits per channel or the format, right? So if I go to create surface, you can imagine it will jump to. Uh, so where did we come from? From surface create surface. So you see that the the surface of the screen, which has some specific implementation of a surface has an ability to create a surface of the same type as itself. So a surface has ability to create a surface that can be used to copy between the surfaces, right? So we, you will be like the surface that you create with this create surface, but can be used as a source to copy to this surface. So that's what this create surface does. And um, the properties tell what surface it must be, right? So renderable would be for the output graphics and non-renderable is for input graphics. So image is non-renderable. And you can see that it's a different object created. If it's a renderable surface, then it is a context, okay, GL context. And otherwise it is a GL texture surface. So this is something else than this, right? So we end up with this surface, which is a new surface. Okay, it has some uh, information here. It has a pixel buffer, width, height, format, pitch. Pitch is the number of bytes from between the lines in this, in this surface, right? Okay, so we, we got the surface, we will not be throwing an error. And now it's calling set surface. When we call set surface, what happens when we call set surface, which is a virtual function, I imagine, um, is it virtual function? Per, no, it's actually it's actually not virtual function. It's a function uh, of this image base. It's a method of image base of this abstract implementation. What this will do, it will remember this newly created uh, surface as a as a you know as a target. You can see this sh surface that's actually a different type of shared pointer. It's called share. So the way shares work is. Um, 
as opposed to shared pointer, when you copy shared pointer, the address of memory that the copy points to is a copy of address of memory that the source pointer was pointing to, right? So when you make a copy of two shared, of one shared, when you copy one shared pointer to another shared pointer, then the first shared pointer may point to address X, and the second shared pointer will point to add a copy of address X. But why I'm saying copy is because if I change the uh, shared pointer number one, if I change it to point to Y, uh, the only thing that changes between those two shared pointers is that reference count to X is reduced by one, but the shared pointer that points to the copy of X still points to that X, it doesn't point to Y. So if I'm changing where the first shared pointer is pointing, the second shared pointer is pointing to the old resource and not to the new resource. And whereas share works differently. Share works like uh, if I'm chain if if multiple if you take multiple copies of this share, then uh, if you change where this share is pointing to in one copy, all copies see the new location. So that's the difference. Okay, and that's important here because if you if I could clone the image. Each clone has to point to the same shared surface, same shared, you know, in this case, GL, GL surface, right? So here we're just setting the target, meaning that this will be the new, new point where they point to. And voila, once we got the surface, we're going to load pixels onto the surface and the load is implemented in the image and the image will use input file system to open the file then it will do another thing so you may think okay it's not complicated enough right we need to complicate it a little bit more because of course it would be too easy so what happens next is the surface the surface that we want to load the, the image to needs to create a writer a writer is a specific thing. It's a it's it's an instance of pixel writer, and pixel writer is an um, abstract class representing object that can do conversions required. Okay, so imagine that this image, this TGA image, is in some format, right? In some format, in some in some resolution, in some pixel format. And the destination uh, texture that we want to write to is in a different format. And you need to make a conversion, for example, of, of bit, bitness, right? So in 2001, we would use, for example, 16-bit textures to save some video memory. And the images would be 32-bit, for instance. And you would do something like dithering during the conversion. So this writer did all this logic behind the scenes to figure out how we're going to do the conversions, what conversions we're going to do. Because at the end, what you want, you want loader to focus on knowing what are the, uh, what pixels it's reading from the TGA, but the loader itself must not be doing any conversions, right? Loader must just be able to load TGA. Whereas load to where, there needs to be a destination when it's loading those pixels to, right? So it's loading them, you see, to this pixel transfer. So whenever loader loads something, it says pixel transfer, here's some pixels. And the way this loader works is it tells pixel transfer, here's a rectangle of pixels. This is the location in the image this rectangle needs to be in. This is the dimensions, right? So it, it has a fragment of the image. It loaded a fragment of an image. It can be some rectangle. It can be a line of image. It can be anything. It can be you know, so some rectangular area from the source image, and that needs to be written into destination texture in some area. So, so this pixel transfer knows then what to do with this, right? So this load will, um, you know, use this pixel transfer. And then after loading, there might be post-processing required. So this is this transfer from here. So let's see what create writer will create for GL, because GL actually had an implementation that didn't require much conversions, because conversions are done in GL. So also interesting fact is that this pixel transfer, the implementation here is created by this create writer of this surface, 
And each type of surface, if it's a GL surface, will create a different writer than if it is a direct X surface. Direct X surface would require that we, on our software side, will do conversions of the pixel formats, whereas GL uh, texture would not require that. GL would do that for us. So, you know, that was a, um, a difference in how these writers were implemented. Um, and you can see here that we have here for GL, uh, we have generic transfer and notify, uh, that's, that's something, and then we say set destination. Destination is pixel buffer width, height, and pitch, right? So that's, uh, that's what it is. It, it comes from, from GL texture. So this creates this generic transfer, which will do the transformation. And then we load the pixels into that pixel transfer. So again, it's a pointer, so we need to click a few times. Few more, few more. Okay, we're finally inside. So here's what happens. We load the header using the same function we use to detect if it's a TGA or not. Then there is some condition. It's really hard to read this code, honestly. I'm feeling embarrassed by looking my code from the past. Um, and then we have some stuff going on that is, you know, TGA specific, right? So we have a man block for the one line, single line, and uh, then there is some magic happening with this transfer. So uh, the set source is a way for us to tell this transfer thing that this is gonna be the properties of the source, right? So you can see the set source will take like, we will tell this, that the source, the transfer needs to know what the source and destination. So it needs to know that source width, source height, what the size of one line is mine and negative so it, we tell it to read backwards and um, yeah the size of a pixel right so we do that and then you can see this is the loop where we read this tga and we essentially read it backwards because i suppose tgas are written backwards so instead of written top to the bottom they're written bottom to top so we just read that, uh, that line and uh, yeah, we, we get the pointer from this memory block, I suppose. And uh, line size times current low line. So it calculates, we calculate here to where. And then we say to transfer to fetch. So we set what is the source properties, right? The transfer, we set that before. And now we're telling it, this is the pointer to, to where the data is. And go ahead and fetch the data from this, this location. And this, we wanna tell this transfer, this is where you need to put it in, in the destination. So this is a rectangle and we say, this is the data and this is where this data needs to be on the destination image, you know? Then this pixel transfer has all the pixels in from the loader. And it could be the case that those pixels landed uh, directly on uh, the, the surface, for example, in direct X. It could be, if there was no conversions required, it might be that the pixels just land directly in the destination surface. But in this case, we may want to do some transformation. So in case of this GL texture, let's see what happens here. What kind of transformation we will perform? Need fetch, does it say no? It says, no, we don't need to fetch whole image. So that's a special case. This, this, this generic transfer is very convoluted and fast that uh, these magic transformations. Now, this pixel switch is an interesting macro. So using that one macro here, I'm doing uh, the tech like sw uh, switch between 
formats, you know, switch between formats of the um, you see source and destination. So we can see pixel switch, first parameter is format, and second parameter is what to do. So we do pixel switch of the pixel switch of the transform imp. And the transform imp is gonna be a template taking these types. And I'll show you how. So this will perform the conversion if required, but it did not, right? Because need transform is false. But let me show you the transform imp is at the bottom here, as far as you remember. I remember that piece a bit. So we have this transform imp. And you see this source and destination pixel types are template parameters. So when you look at the switch, it would be testing the you know source and destination format um, against number of different formats, and it would create this. It will call specialization of this for this specific specific pixel format, and then this will happen. So you have uh, options of dithering or copy pixel if you want fastest then copy pixel otherwise maybe dithering right if you convert from higher bits to lower bits so need transform was false so we didn't do any transform so the next stage is to store the whole image but need store is false so we can see that we didn't actually do any transform here So we see the image was actually loaded and there was no additional processing done to it. The next thing after setting the surface is set clipper. Clipper is another thing that uh, you know allows us to uh, just you know draw a fragment of the image instead of the whole image right so here we just say the whole image but if you want to put a fragment of the image so you can imagine that when you when you draw ui uh, using tiling on one image you may have a button and then to draw tiled using tiles to draw a button of different size you have to cut fragments of this source and tile it in a way that um, you know it looks like a nice button so you want to use this clipper to to clip fragments and put them on a destination location color key it's for technology where the image would use some specific color to make it transparent so that was also the case in some time ago it's kind of you know vintage technology i would say these days um bleed effects uh, so those are just properties you can set when you're bleeding so you can see this is um, yeah so you're gonna use color key you want to use some maybe rotation i don't even know if that actually ever worked um, you can use some stuff in there right and it bleeds into position x y get surface from the image so we have bleed to so image bleed to screen and then surface of the screen bleed into it surface from the image right and there is rectangle so now GL context surface will take this source surface uh, assume that it is GL texture surface and there will be lots of things going on here so I'm going to make it a little bigger for you So first thing is prepare 2D. Prepare 2D will set the projection and the transformation matrices, right? So texture, model view, projection, all those set to identity, um, disable everything, and so on. So it will just make it so that we can use GL for 2D graphics. The next thing is we use this GL image tessellator for the source and that will you know take this texture surface real texture surface and uh, it will create uh, some number of textures there you know that's a lot of work from the past you can see here is a lot of things going on and um, 
I make current guild contacts is current, make current is not needed. There's some assumptions here. So we have a, uh, what, guild is later. So we try to find out if the surface has uh, resources assigned. Um, it does not. Surface is later mapping. You can see it's uh, some some surface plus some garbage information such as age and so on. There is a lot of going on here. I can tell you that. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't think we're gonna go into that. This does a lot of magic, as you can see, and uh, the point is that this will produce some tessellator, whatever that is, and uh, this tessellator will, uh, it has remembered its width and height, number of rows, number of columns. Um, you know, six and seven, so that's the number of tiles we'll use to produce this image. And um, enable texture, set the clipping, enable scissor text, test, flute fill, uh, not sure exactly what that is. I think this is to color the, the image, to add some coloring to the texture. So you can imagine that uh, this could be used for fonts as well. So we can have a texture, like an I like one image with all the letters on it, and it can be black and white. And then use the color here to, it's a fluid field to, you know, give them some color. You can use some constant alpha to make it partially transparent. You can use some color key. Then we use this greater test. And then we do a number of things here. It just goes over uh, rectangles in the clip region. Okay. It applies the scissor. So this is a clip region, so for every rectangle in the clip region needs scissors. Then we push the matrix, use the render transfer, and render, you know. So this use render transform um, you will will set scale and translation as we can see so this for our stretching um, and then we render so for every um, for every little tile I create a triangle strip it just keeps going like this and eventually this is what happens you get the image on the screen and we swap the buffers, which is a simple call, I suppose. And I have swap buffers here on WGL screen. Have GL garbage being freed, so I, I defer, it's deferred destruction of surfaces. I don't want to destruct surfaces immediately because something might be using them or like I, I, I want to destroy them after swapping the buffers, right? And there's also this update for if you render video, but uh, you need to have direct show for this. So that's our, our draw. And then in application run, um, you know what we're going to do? We have this message loop, you know, we have the message loop. Um, so we run application on 
on update send so you can see here how the signal is sent so this is a signal on update and uh, the signal is just sent and whoever is listening to on update is gonna get this and next thing is we pick message we get message if there was a message translate the shortcuts translate the message and dispatch the message and uh, otherwise I can put it here breakpoint so if, if we didn't get any message we're gonna go signal this patch and you know what what signal this patch is it is a static method which is um, dispatching scheduled tasks so there is this um, schedule I suppose it must be static and uh, in this uh, dispatch which is dispatch uh, signals that are async asynchronous right this is asynchronously um, scheduled signals and yeah this is also handling the asynchronous calls this way So that's what this is doing and then if you want to do idle you know if we don't want to do idle then we just wait if we want to do idle then we calculate the time delta that elapsed so automatically we have this you know it's good to know how much time was between the frames of rendering how much time elapsed so that we can do some update in the game engine and uh, if delta is greater than some minimum time okay then uh, then we send this on idle signal and then whoever is subscribed to the signal will receive the callback then for all windows as well we say to windows on idle we also send this to signal in the each window and then um, we sleep for a amount of time if we want to sleep this is greater than zero this delta And then later on we have on timer instance execute so that is another thing another asynchronous you know another asynchronous stuff so you have this delayed executor here and this delayed executor has a list of tasks And you can see that it will uh, look through the tasks and uh, execute them if, if they meet certain conditions. Right. And this, this execute uh, will be called uh, in a loop on whenever application gets idle. So that's what application run does. And um, if you're interested to know where um, the message loop might be so it's all in application here right there is this do handle event and that is uh, our message prots you know so we have this event handler and what happens is we check if there is a handler um, in this map we handle the message if there is otherwise we do do handle right and our default handling is to find the window so we keep the mapping for between the handle and the window and um, 
we can lose messages in this global function, right? All those window messages in this way, and we send signals as well, right, to the window. So that's, that's what happens here. Yeah, so so I think this is basically some, some overview of how this magic works. Uh, as you can see, there is a lot of magic behind there. This, this code does all the magic you need um, to, to make, uh, you know, to make some 2D graphics GUI. And I didn't show you actually the GUI itself because it was required to load some more images and construct a GUI, some buttons, some frames, and so on. But you have a library, GUI library here, and everything is in here. Maybe maybe I'll do another talk about GUI as well. That would be maybe interesting. The library consists of, as you see, a number of modules, and um, each of them is interesting on its own. So I have talked about graphics today, about as you see, device is the platform abstraction layer. So for every different platform, you'd have here implementation. And then this stuff here is independent, right? So like file.io would be for loading different file formats. So BMP, TGA, PNG. Um, then Pixel is uh, just a module with some very low level algorithms that allow you to just draw some pixel graphics. For example, draw a line with some anteliasing, things like that. It's algorithmic, you know, graphics. And then you have planes, so this is image planes. So you have a number of things here. You have the image, but you also have image buffer where you can just put, it, draw something into this image buffer. It's not screen, it's an off-screen buffer. You have a thing called the mass color, so it's, it's just an alpha channel and uh, it's called mask color because you have a file with ma with, a, with alpha and you have a color that you want to paint it with right so it's just uh, like this and then you have you have a surface in memory as well you have a surface painter which allows you to to draw using this pixel algorithms, so you can draw pixel, line, polygon, with some anteliasing. Um, so the, the transfer, graphic transfer, is for transferring uh, graphic, the raster data from one place to another place. So it's used by loaders when loader loads pixels it needs to put them into destination, into texture, but uh, this defines how to do it. So those writers, they, they, they um, define transformation. Um, There's also a movie which is for, uh, well, I call this movie, but there is also like Og Vorbis, which is audio decoder. So like a long audio path, you wouldn't have long audio path um, in WAV file. Um, so, so that's treated differently than, uh, for example, system sound. A sound would be like for sound effects. And this would be like a background music, for example, we're using Og Vorbis decoder. And here you have direct show, which allows you to render, um, you know, video onto the texture. Um, and also there is XML here which contains the XML parser and then there is a resources folder and in this resources folder there is a lot of factory functions, factory methods and all these factory methods do, I'm going to for example show you sound that's a simple one uh, you see it has create sound and create sample. So this is just factory method that create a thing called resource based on some XML uh, element, right? So you have some XML. In that XML, you define what sound card will be, what the audio 
file will be and uh, for example this will find uh, an element uh, you know there, this this will try to find something that was earlier defined as a screen with a label with id screen this one is applied to specific uh, you know this xml iterator represents a node in xml so for, for this node we want attribute source and that's file name and this is how we create sample file and we just resource is any resource so it's it's essentially resources in implementation like of any you know we have any here and those are the lots of different resources you can create right like an image for example this is uh, image resource and image resource can have number of different attributes in the XML element, so that's why this code is more convoluted, and it allows you to to get the image from XML created. Um, yeah, so there is there is lots of lots of different factory methods to to create from XML something in this something in this framework. Which makes it much easier to to make little applications. So you see, you don't need to actually write any of those. You can create all of this using XML. Uh, you can have a like using XML. You just specify the name of a of a title title of the screen, the dimensions, or if you want full screen. You can even use XML to attach some signals to some functions in in some specific language there is a language here not in this project use less it's in uh, another directory but uh, yeah it's all it's all integrated so yeah um, that that would be it uh, if, if you find it interesting uh, then yeah like comment subscribe um, yeah so let's let's see again how this how this works you can stretch the window and click thank you for watching and see you again